It was Morley who told a Los Angeles audience that... A series of atomic explosions, either accidental or deliberate, could set off a chain reaction to annihilate every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth. It could cause the death of every living thing. In a gloomy report, Morley took a dim view of history, recalled the tragically repetitious story, the decline and fall of all past civilizations. Said Morley, modern civilization could, by the phenomenon of atomic fission, be brought to dust and ashes. And science has promised us bombs a thousand times more powerful, poisoning with radioactivity all the air and water of this earth. This could mean not only the end of our own civilization, but the very possibility of any future civilization. What are we going to do about it? I'll tell you what I am going to do about it. I have a plan, a plan to preserve human life on this planet. I hope you will join with me in carrying it out. And so my colleagues and I believe that humanity can escape annihilation, can find a temporary haven, a promise of hope that come what may, life can be sustained deep within the earth itself. Far below the surface, we shall seek a natural, a geological shelter. We have a team ready for the effort. All we lack are funds. Can we get them from your foundation? Gentlemen, I came here tonight with a proposition. I have some money of my own. I would like to finance your project. Are you serious? Sit down, my boy. There's one stipulation, however. I go with you. the expedition are being completed ahead of schedule. And Morley is pleased with our progress. The cyclotram nears completion. Adequate nutrition in concentrated form has been perfected. And for an auxiliary water supply, a Sloan H2O condenser will be used. By the study of our laboratory animals in a new environment, we expect to gather important scientific data. At last, the cyclotram is ready to be loaded aboard the SS Aurora. As we descend ever deeper into the volcano, I have observed no unusual physical symptoms. Paxton seems withdrawn, irritable, but with such an annoyance as Wright Thompson present, the condition may not be considered abnormal. We're down a hundred miles. You better pull up. Cut the switches. It's funny. When we first got here, I felt a sort of exaltation. Now I feel depressed. I don't know why. The oxygen content is adequate. I know. But I too feel suffocated. Maybe it's the unreality of this place. I think I know what it is. It's loneliness. It's a feeling of a person away from people. I felt it on the top of a mountain in Tibet, in the jungles, and on the Arabian desert. It's like the last cord tying you with humanity has been cut. It's more than that. People have dignity only in relation to many other people. Alone, a man is as useless as any rock out there. No, you're both talking nonsense. Nature doesn't influence man. Man influences nature. One man, one strong man, can change nature. Ah, oh, you're on, Dr. Paxton. It isn't one man. It's many men working together. Right, teacher? Men together are no more than sheep. One man standing alone leads the way. Then the sheep follow. Please, gentlemen. Well, I'm please. embarrassed for all of you who call yourself scientist. Swayed by a self-indulgent young fool. 
I'm going ahead. I hope that by the time you catch up with me, the atmosphere will have cleared the cobwebs from your brains. I'd better go with him. It isn't safe for a man to be alone down here. Ah, he's all right. He's the leader type. I'll go with him anyway. There wouldn't be leaders if there weren't sheep like me to be led. <laughs> 